In this video, we're talking about CSI, the Control Service Integrator extension for Reaper. Almost completely allows you to customize your hardware. So if you have a motorized fader controller like the BCF2000, like you see here, or any other combination of MIDI controllers and things like that, you can combine them. You can um, control what each button and knob does. It's very powerful. Uh, we're not going to go completely in depth with that. We're mostly going to focus on setting up this particular device, but it's definitely worth a look. Let's jump into it. In the description of this video, I will have links to all of the wiki documentation for this, the link to the forum post where this is being discussed. There's over 800 posts now in there. Um, as well as the Reapinger BCF2000 MST and Zon files they will need if you're using the BCF2000 and you want to use it exactly this way. I have CSI downloaded and the Reapinger BCF2000 uh, kind of uh, layout for this Behringer controller uh, downloaded. Once I extract the CSI zip on Windows, it's the CSurf integrator 64.dll. That goes into Reaper's user plugins folder which you see, I've already installed it and that's right here. I'm also taking the CSI folder and copying that into Reaper's main install folder. So we've got CSI. Inside there's surfaces and zones and touch OSC layouts folders. If I go back to my other, uh, the layout for the control surface, I have the source folder and then actions, services and zones. So inside of surfaces, I go to MIDI and then the Reapinger BCF2000.mst file that goes into CSI surfaces MIDI. I drop that in and then under zones, I just go back to zones on both. I'm looking for the Reapinger BCF2000 and I can drag the whole folder in. And most of these are going to be effects mappings. And I've done a whole bunch. I went pretty much a whole day on um, modifying, uh, creating my own effects layout. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. On the actual controller, we're setting this up in Mackie control mode. Hold down the second button, then turn on the device. After a few seconds of boot up, press the exit button. Mine's already set up this way. And then in Reaper, we're going to preferences and control surface, and we go to add. In here, we're looking for control surface integrator. Click on home page, then click on add MIDI. And this will be different for whatever device you're using. For me, this is how it's set up with this uh, with the Reaper um, download that I I got. So I'm just going to call this BCF. This is an eight channel controller. We're not offsetting the start. If you had a second one of these devices that you're connecting with this, you would just start that at uh, channel nine. I'm pretty sure it's channel nine. Number of sends we're going to eight, and number of effects menu eight. For MIDI in, we're going to B control port one. MIDI out, B control port one. For surface, we're looking for Reapinger BCF2000. For zone fader, the same thing, Reapinger BCF2000. I hit OK, hit OK. And the first fader popped up because I have one track in the project. So for the last few years, I've been using this controller in Mackie Control Extender mode. That gives me eight faders that link to Reaper, so I'm controlling track levels. I've got the knobs for panning. I've got track mute and track select here. Holding the shift buttons and things like that, I've got solo and uh, record arm for those tracks. I've got some basic transport controls, like going to the next marker, play and pause and stop. Pretty useful stuff. What it doesn't do is sends or effects controls. And that's what Control Service Integrator is going to add for this particular device. It's going to allow me to control up to eight sends per track and up to eight effects per track. And the effects layouts can be completely customized. And I think that is wonderful. All right, so we've got eight tracks here. I'm going to send from, let's, let's take from track one to eight. I'm going to hold down Shift. And with tracks two to eight selected, I'm going to drag the routing button. And so that's put in eight sends with the default level to each of the tracks. Routing window looks like this. 
Track one sends us to track two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, all at minus 12. Fader controls for the first eight tracks. It feels very responsive. Um, it's not touch sensitive because this is a very old device, um, but it all works and it has automatic feedback set up. So if I drag something with the mouse, it moves on the controller as well. On the knobs, we've got panning and width control. So if you have your Reaper set to show stereo pan mode on the knobs, we've got panning control. And we click in and then you have width control. So you can go from reversed 100% width to mono to 100% wet. And um, the way this is set up, there's sort of a dead zone where you kind of have to pull it a lot more to get out of the, the center or left right positions. I don't know exactly how to do that, but you can definitely customize that. Any of the mappings and things can have their own sort of curves to the parameters. It defaults to linear, but you can always adjust that. So similar to the Mackie controller mode, I've got track select, but instead, um, instead of being adding to the selection, it actually overrides the previous one so that only a single track is selected. You can hold down the option key and then select a second track and that does a range of tracks. If I press the top shift and the bottom option button, or I think it's called home button in this layout, if I press these two buttons, then the faders flip to controlling the sends. If I want my first send to go up, press this and you can see that in the interface right here. And then I can grab the pan knob and I can adjust the panning of that send as well. Pretty useful to have those I can control all my sends on the faders, press a button and it goes back to controlling the tracks. Very cool. Then we have effects controls and this is a effect layout that I set up myself. With the first track selected, I'm going to press the bottom shift and the home button and then tap on one and that's brought up the effects controls. My faders are, um, because I set this up earlier, they're linked to the various parameters in here and um, feedback is automatic. So if I move something with a mouse, like the feedback knob, that's going to move my fader. So MIDI feedback automatically assigned. I don't remember exactly how I've got this set up, but most of the, the most used functions I've got on the knobs, I just don't remember which ones are which. And you can set up pressing the button, uh, pressing in one of the pans will you can have it reset or you can have it jump to a, pre a preset value. Um, you can have a knob and a fader blinked if you want. There's all kinds of things you can do with this, but it's not completely automatic. It does take some trial and error. Here's the air lo-fi layout. So I've got my first fader on sample rate, my second fader on bit depth, and these are the two controls that I use most. I've got my anti-aliasing on here. If I press in the first button, that turns on the alias anti-aliasing section. LFO shape, my LFO rate and depth. Uh, nope, uh, depth is on one of the faders. Depth is something I control more. And then in this case, the mix control, it's on the far right. Might make sense to have the mix control on the far right. But if another plugin has it on the left, maybe it makes more sense to have it on the left, even if it's not your most used effect or most used parameter. So I put up a few more effects on this track kind of at random, but these are um, plugins that I've already set up layouts for. We've got the Air Lo-Fi. If I press this button, if I press the second button, it goes to the second effects. And so I've got my gate controls here, all the most used things I've got on the faders. It can be a little tricky when there's a lot of parameters and not, and you know, you only have 16 things here, but you can add in things like the option key. So you hold down one of the buttons. If you look at the low filter frequency, and I hold down the option key, I can control the frequency. If I let go of that, I'm controlling the gain. And that can be a way to, um, to get a little bit more flexibility with that. So uh, in this case, in the low mids, I wanted to only have two knobs to control everything. So I've got one for gain, the second knob is for frequency. And if I hold it down, that's for Q. And the same with the high mids, I've got one for the EQ gain, another for frequency, and if I hold down the options key, I've got the bandwidth of that 
I've got dedicated knobs for the filters, a butt I can press in to turn on that filter. If I go to the next plugin, I've got sausage fattener. And so the first fader is fatness, the second is color, and then I've got gain on the third. These other faders stayed where they were because they uh, didn't have anything linked, so I just kind of neglected to uh, put in a, a fader reset for those. But, and then here's Molotov from Tokyo Don Labs. So I've got threshold, attack. On this one, I've got attack. I've got the mode, release, uh, makeup gain at the end. And this is one where there's more knobs and faders than I had uh, parameters to link. So um, sidechain, I can press that to turn that on and off. Ratio. So it does take a little bit of time to set up, but I think it is worth it if you can get away from using the mouse for everything. Switching between the different modes is very simple. It's just using these uh, the group encoder groups button section at the top. I can always go back to home by pressing this button here. And now I'm back to controlling the track faders. Included with CSI are a few different uh, very useful commands in the action list. So search for CSI, we've got show input, show output, show params when effects inserted, write params to CSI zones raw effects files when effects inserted. So this will actually create a default layout for you within this folder here. So CSI uh, zones zone raw effects files. It can put in a text file that gives you your default parameters already named and numbered. Usually what I do is this other action, show params when effects inserted, just double click to run that. And so when I add in a plugin, let's take the T-Rex 5 bus compressor and drop that on a track. The Rescript console window pops up. It has all my params listed there. We're gonna go into the zones menu, make sure you're in the right folder, and then we'll create a new text file. So I'm gonna open up um, Notepad Plus for this. And I'll go to new, paste that in. And so it's got the, the right name. Select track navigator means it's gonna follow the track selection. Not every plugin is gonna have every control in the same order that you want. Sometimes things get a little bit messy with this. So ratio, attack, release, sidechain, high pass. It seems like those are in order, but often these plugins do not work like that. And there's bypass, bypass, and wet. The first bypass should be the bypass within the plugin, and the second one should be this um, effects bypass function in Reaper, and then there's the wet control. I'm actually gonna get rid of all of those because I know I'm not gonna use those. In this case, I think I'm going to use the first fader as ratio, the second as threshold, the third as makeup. I might use the first three um, knobs as attack, release, sidechain filter. What you type in here is going to depend on the device the way it's set up. I'm following the example made for this um, controller. It may be different for you, or if you're starting from scratch, you can choose exactly what you want this to be. So in this case, fader one, and then it just tab a couple times, linked to effects parameter zero, named ratio. Attack will be on rotary one, and then release will be on rotary two. And there's no space with my layout between the numbers, but for parameters, you do want a, a space between. Sidechain frequency will be three, so rotary three. Threshold will be fader two. Fader three for makeup. This last one, which was, it's actually a toggle. Um, I usually have it on all the time, but we're gonna set this as a toggle on one of the buttons. So this will be rotary push one. And then we need to set the range. And so two different settings, one at zero and one at one. Square bracket space zero dot zero. You can just put zero, but you know I like to follow the other examples that have been shown to me. So one and then a space and a square bracket. Control S to save. I'm calling this file tr5 underscore bus underscore compressor dot zon. 
it has to be a .zon file for it to work. Uh, if you save it as a text file, this won't work. And you need to make sure that you're on like all types. You're not saving as a text file, like .zon.txt. That's not going to work. It has to be .zon and no other extension. In Reaper, we need one other action to actually reload this layout. Going to the action list and search for refresh. Control surfaces, refresh all surfaces. I set this to Alt F1. So right now I'm in the home layout, which is controlling the faders. I'm going to hold down the shift and press the home button and then tap on the first effect slot. And that brings up my controls. And so here's the plugin. First controller is on ratio. Second is threshold. Third is makeup. The first knob is set to attack. The second knob is set to release. The third knob is set to sidechain high pass. And if I press in the first knob, that's going to enable the grit function. It's really that simple for a lot of the layouts. I'm going to show you a couple more before we go. Some of them are a little more complicated. The first one I tried to do was this Air Lo-Fi plugin. And I put in a lot of extra parameters that aren't really necessary, just because I was following some examples that didn't really apply. Display effect one and fixed text display. This seems to be more for, for other controllers that have scribble strips and things like that. If you want to have the effect name or the effect parameter on under the parameter, you need to do this. But this doesn't actually control MIDI feedback or anything like that. Display add lower eight effects param value display 15. This is just saying display the, the value of parameter 15 on the lower display. And so this, is, this applies to other controllers. I can delete all of this extra stuff and it will still work. All this display stuff, it doesn't apply to my controller. And uh, so if you see this in any of the example layouts, this is only required. Um, for devices that have screens, uh, which mine does not, and yours may not either. It, it really can be as simple as fader, a space, and then the effects parameter number. You can give it a name. I think the name is really mostly for um, your own um, debugging and things like that. Anytime you're making a change to this and you want to reload it, you need to remember to use that control surface refresh all surfaces function that will automatically reload that um, that layout. If we go to the sausage fattener layout here, remember there was the issue with the faders not resetting. So we're going to uh, just put in those unused parameters in here as assignments. So fader, uh, fader four, and then we'll put in no action, capital N, lowercase o, capital A, C-T-I-O-N. You don't have to do this. It's not often a problem, but occasionally it can be confusing um, if you're not using all the faders and the previous layout did use all the fa faders. Uh, so when you're switching between different effects layouts on the same track and the faders aren't coming down, it can just be a little confusing. So I've got this set up so that eight faders are used there. Um, going to refresh all surfaces. I'm going to bring Sausage Fattener into the track. All right, so when I tap on the first effects button, the bus compressor comes up. If I tap on the second one, sausage fattener comes up. And if I move these faders up, they're automatically going to come down. Pretty simple. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this has been interesting. Even if you don't have one of these controllers, they were made in 2005, but they still work. So uh, it, it seems to be a pretty good value. And a lot of the newer ones don't quite have the same layout. Uh, they're still just as big or, or way, way, way more expensive. You can get these for about $200 still. I got mine for $100 used, and I had to repair it before I could use it. Since then, it's been working very well for me. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.